everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've never been here before hey so in today's video we will be discussing the case of maribel the 11 year old serial killer if you've never heard of this case before then you're about to so maribel was born on may 26 1967 to her mother betty her mother's name was betty who literally when she saw her baby for the first time she hand her baby over to the cops and said here take this thing away from me because i'm guessing she did not want to have a kid mary's mother was a prostitute she was a 16 year old prostitute so mary grew up in a town in newcastle england that's called scott woods scott woods was kind of like the slums it was kind of like the ghetto but like a little more ghetto kids like two year old they will be outside playing unsupervised. The area was like very poor. A lot of the women in the town, there were prostitutes, like literally every other household, there was a prostitute because I'm guessing that's just how they made their living. So Mary's mom, Betty, was always away on business. So she was never really home. But Mary didn't really care if she's not home much because when she was home, like she literally was very abusive to Mary. Like she was abusive both mentally and physically. And somehow Mary just happened to miraculously be accident prone. Like something is always happening to her. Like she fell off of a, fell out of a window on like a high building one time. And then she overdosed on sleeping pill another time. People really thought that Mary's mom, Betty, was actually giving her the sleeping pills so she can, you know, cause she's been really trying to get rid of the kid. So she just been giving her the sleeping pills as candy. She's really been trying to get rid of her. Like one time, Betty, who was Mary's mom, her sister, Betty's sister, literally caught Betty trying to give away Mary. Like she went up to this woman who has been trying to adopt kids unsuccessfully. And she literally was like, here, take her. And then the woman walked off and Mary's mom's sister, so Mary's aunt literally had to go find her. I mean, she probably should have left her with that lady because the Lord knows she probably would have turned out a little bit better. And Mary's dad was a drunk. He was like literally a petty criminal and a drunk. So, I mean, her mom is a prostitute and her dad is a petty criminal and a drunk. I mean, Mary didn't stand a chance at this point. So, given the circumstances of Mary's upbringing, she was just very different. She was just very withdrawn, very weird, weird because weird could be a good thing. A lot of her classmates did not want to play with her. And that's mainly because she was like really aggressive. She was just mean. So her other classmates didn't really want to play with her. One of the teachers noticed that one of the students had a scar on her cheek. And when the teacher asked her what happened, she literally said that Mary put out a cigarette on her cheek. I mean, I have so many questions. You are 10 why do you have a cigarette like where are the adults like what were they doing in school like what so because of mary's aggressive and evil behavior she really didn't have any friends except for one kid her name was norma bell norma was older than mary she was like two years older than mary but mary was more developed norma bell isn't related to mary bell i'm guessing bell was just like a very common last name so norma was less developed than mary mary was the ringleader and people in the community literally believe that if mary would have told norma to jump off of a bridge she literally would have so on march 11th 1968 mary was playing with this three-year-old kid who ended up falling off of a building his parents thought it was an accident no one really thought anything of it but a few ladies in the community actually reported to police and told police that mary tried to strangle their kids police they didn't really think anything of it they just like briefly spoke with her and then you know basically just like gave her a lecture and then just move on right before mary's birthday on may 25th right before she turned 11 she actually strangled a four-year-old kid his name was martin brown mary strangled him in an abandoned home at first the police they didn't really think anything of it again because they actually when they went to the crime scene they just saw like a little bit of blood on his face so they didn't really think anything of it and then they saw empty pill bottles i mean why is there pills everywhere so they thought that he might have taken the pills thinking that they were candy and also his mother said that he's like really afraid of heights so she thought that he probably went up the stairs and then looked down and just like somehow shocked and died 
so they didn't really think anything of it they literally said that his death was an accident and said that he died from natural causes at four years old he was four martin's family didn't really think anything of it but one day mary and her friends norma showed up to martin's home and she asked martin's mother can she see him martin's mom explained to them they were like you know he died you can't see him he's not coming by because you know she just thought they didn't really understand and mary literally looked at this woman and she was like, I know, I want to see him in his coffin. I mean, oh my God, girl, crazy, right? His mom was literally in shock. Like she literally just like slammed the door in front of her face and just, she was just in shock. Like obviously she couldn't believe that a kid says that. So the whole time Mary has been telling her classmates that she was the one who killed martin brown but obviously they didn't really believe her no one believed her at the school because she's like a little bit crazy so she like literally will make up stories she liked to brag and you know she will like literally make it up so nobody really took her seriously um one afternoon a nursery was actually vandalized and there were notes like very disturbing notes that were left in the nursery basically threatening to kill again basically saying oh i killed martin brown and i'll kill again and you know so they literally thought it was just like a morbid prank for the nursery so they didn't really think anything of it and at the time the nursery didn't really have any surveillance so they didn't really look further into it so a few months later after mary committed her first murder she actually striked again mary killed a two-year-old boy his name was brian howie and she basically killed him in the same manner that she killed the first boy martin by strangulation um, but this time she actually used the scissors to basically leave like a i'm guessing a branding or leave like a logo so she was like really turning into a real psycho at this point so she kind of like used the scissors to kind of like leave like a logo when the little boy's family started looking for him the police organized the search and mary would literally be at the front row she was she would literally go and help his sister looking for him and even at one point she pointed over to the rock like over where his body was hiding she pointed over there like telling his sister like oh look over there he may be over there i mean his sister was like no i don't think so and then just like moved on but that's really where he was so based on the gentleness of the murder this is when detectives realized that they were looking for a child because i'm guessing if it was an adult it would have been more I don't know more aggressive more gruesome so they tell that the strength basically was from a child so the detective they kind of figure out like mary was always present so they were looking at her a little bit weird because she would be asking questions and just like basically being weird just being extremely weird so given the similarities of martin's and brian's death they decided to open the case again for martin's death to really look into it and then this is when they found out that Martin's death was actually not an accident, but instead a homicide. So now they started interviewing kids in the neighborhood just to kind of like, you know, try to figure out who, you know, who they think did it or like, or even more importantly, like if anybody saw anything, like if any of the kids seen anything. So um, Mary and Norma, they were acting strange. They were just acting very strange. Mary was laughing. Mary just was not serious. So they kind of figure out that Mary was the one who did it because Mary basically gave herself away. Like when the detective would ask her questions, she would literally answer the questions before the questions were finished. And she would just basically be talking a lot. So obviously that just makes her look super guilty. And then she actually tried to blame the crime on another kid. But this is what she said that really gave her away. She actually said that she saw the kid and the kid had like a broken scissors and nobody nobody knew about the fact that the kid had a brandon or initial cut on his torso except for the person who did it and the detective so this is what made them really was just like okay well this is who committed the crime now mary and norma basically started blaming each other and you know even the detectives they even said that mary actually threatened to kill norma in front of them like girl you're crazy so at this point norma was acquitted because they figured that norma is basically under the influence of mary like she literally 
just wouldn't even do anything without Mary. One of the kid was actually at the crime scene when it happened, at Brian's crime scene. But this kid, I think he was like 11, but he has like a mental age of four. So he wasn't really developed. So he didn't really know what was going on. So basically the kid said that the method that Mary used to kill is that she would literally go around and just like tell like little boys that they have like a sore throat and she can make it better. And she would like massage their necks and then, you know, proceed to strangling them. Like, yeah, that's really, really psycho. So at Mary's trial, the psychiatrist said that she, she shows pattern of a psychopath. I mean, no shit. So they didn't charge her for murder. They actually charged her for for manslaughter and because of her her age they weren't able to actually put her in like regular jail so what they did was they sent her to kind of like a boarding school that was called her majesty so um i think her majesty treasures so that boarding school you would basically stay there and then you know they, they will watch you to see how you're doing to see how you're progressing and then they will decide when you're able to leave so it's not like she was sentenced to like a certain amount of years or anything like that like no that's not how that works you're just basically going to stay there until they feel like you've improved and until they feel like you're no longer a threat to society so 12 years later they decided that mary was actually well enough and capable to be out among society because she was no longer a threat and by the way let me just say this while mary was in jail her mother was literally selling her handwritings like like selling photos you know just to like make money mary was released from the facility where she was still living her normal she was still serving her sentence but she was just out living her normal life so i'm guessing that's parole basically so she was on parole for like a really really long time um so now the only problem is that mary was actually under protective custody so she was being protected by the government so she was given a new name whole new identity to just like go out into the world because i'm guessing because of the age that she was when she was convicted so yeah she was just basically given like a new name so she can just go out into the world and just have a brand new life so for a very long time obviously people were upset about this because they're like you commit a crime and then now you get to hide um and then the tabloids they like really try to find her but eventually they did found her under her common law husband so mary did end up having a kid so her kid actually didn't know about her crimes until she was 14 years old so mary's husband mary's kid and mary ended up having to leave the house because the public did find out where she lived so she ended up having to leave and then she just went into another protective location i'm guessing so that now that same anonymity will pass down to her daughter to her daughter's daughter basically will just pass down on to them so yeah people were just not happy about that that you basically get to commit a crime and then you know live under a new identity so as of today mary is still alive somewhere no one knows but she's still very much alive out here living her regular life and yeah so yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I mean, you made it this far, like might as well. Yeah, that is all I have for today. See you in my next one. Bye-bye.